here today. Uh, my name is Jason McQuiggan. I'm the head of virtual reality on the Think Reality team here at Lenovo. My counterpart, Dr. Greg Jones. Greg Jones. I'm with uh, NVIDIA's XR team. I'm the director of business development there. And uh, looking forward to talking to you about XR and Gen AI. Yeah. Excellent. And thanks for the invite. Oh, yeah, my yeah. pleasure. You know, you know, Greg and I have been able to work together over many years now. Uh, probably about four years or so, we've been working on various different projects. Uh, always trying to push the boundaries of uh, how different technologies cross over into XR. Yep. So, one of the things we're hearing a lot about right now is whether or not generative AI is kind of just the flavor of the month. You know, is this that next thing that we're talking about and will it just be gone in a month or two and then we're going to be on to the next Or thing? is it the real deal? Is it yeah. the real deal, yeah. 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 And that, that I think is our, our, our biggest regular question because there's so much confusion around What's Gen AI, what's AGI, what's just traditional AI? Uh, we've been hearing about these different things for many years. What is the meat that makes this something yep, significantly yep. different? <clears throat> and you know, the, really the, the way we see it is you know, this is a true game changer because it's acting as a catalyst, like a force multiplier for right. so many industries. Right. And an area that we see it dramatically impacting is in the XR space because XR requires so many of those tools that we're using already with Gen AI, things around uh, text based programming, art, art, art assets, yep. all things that require a massive amount of time, uh, which is creating restrictions within the XR market, are going to be enabled and, and uh, unstuck because of Gen AI. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let's use a hypothetical, for example, and, and this is one thing that we approach very, very regularly with our customers. Organizations that say has uh, a thousand people uh, that they onboard every single month. If they're onboarding a thousand people a month, they have a lot of needs on onboarding, uh, a lot of needs with uh, you know, what they're doing for training, uh, everything from the company culture to their human resources aspect. And to do that repeatedly over and over again, there's an enormous cost associated with all that onboarding. And if you're in an organization like that and you've done the research, you know that XR really is a powerful way of doing that. It, it is a super tool yeah. for training, no Absolutely. doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about and it. as we're seeing that, the restriction that a lot of organizations face is that how do we create the content that's specific to our organization that makes it work for us? And if we're creating that content, how do we do it effectively, fast to market, and that's why we're so excited about Gen AI within the space, is because it's acting as this massive supercharger to get content out much more quickly, to get it done in a better quality, and really an area we're gonna focus on is the democratization of those tools. Yeah, yeah. Making small teams seem large, individuals being able to do 10 times the amount of work. Yep. Um, and we're gonna just sit down and break down some of the major tools that we're seeing in the space today. So starting with uh, you know, text-based tools, so uh, I, I know you know you and I have had talked about this many times before, but everybody within the entire stack, from the, the basic production folks uh, to the brainstorming, writing, but an area we're really seeing a lot of excitement around is uh, around programmatic aspects, is how you could use that as a developer. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how you're seeing that in, in your space. Well, certainly, we, we've even done some work where, where we take you into XR and you have a verbal command. Instead of using a GUI, you do a verbal command the Gen AI takes that up, understands that command, writes the Python script, and activate, activates the, the thing. So not only do you not have a coder in the middle coding, yeah. but you actually have just a person talking, generating code for something like Autodesk VRED to activate. Yeah. And so this new scripting or this new way of, I can tell, tell something in normal language and it can be converted to code or, or whatever codec you want to think of or whatever jargon you want to think of is really an amazingly powerful tool. And, and it's, it's, it seems like magic and it's happening, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's actually still writing that code. It's just you're not having to have that coder in between. That's right, yeah. and, and it's really astounding. You know, the, the fact that with the, the early work like uh, BERT and such, where you could guess what word is next, but you didn't have a lot of context with the position of the words. Now that these attention-only transformers are looking around and saying, where does this word fit in the overall, let's say, milieu of words, now you can say something and that next word generated is much more accurate and much more subtle. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and another area we're seeing a lot is, is something that uh, your CEO, Jensen, talked about a couple of months back um, at, I think it was Computex, around conversational avatars. And we're seeing this being utilized throughout game development, throughout XR development yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. where instead of having to create that branching path and a programmer having to sit there and say, I have A, B, and C choices, and if I choose B, I've now got these new branching choices, every single one of those steps would have to be put into place by a programmer. 
And now by simply declaring a persona and saying, here's your, here's your knowledge base to yeah. that yeah, avatar, yeah. It can react in real time and have unique conversations with every individual user without having that programmatic input of having to create all those linkages between those paths. That's right. So, and that, that jumps right into where we're seeing a lot of the art-based tools. You know, that time-saving aspect for a programmer is also what we're seeing time-saving aspects for developers in the art space. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's it's really amazing when you think of the. Um, the chatbots and such, and customizing your LLM, right? So not only for a, a chatbot with your company's knowledge, data, what have you, or the personality of the chatbot, but now when you take that to art, I can also train my, you know, for instance, uh, NVIDIA has an Edify foundational model. It takes relatively few images to give that Edify model an idea of something very specific, right? So the training, not only in these language models, but or the large language models with text, but also with images, is really astounding to see how quickly and, and fluid they are for training with, you know, between your prompt engineering or just training a smaller data set in front of the larger data sets, really, really changing the landscape in both yeah. the text and art worlds, yeah. And that creativity is unlocked so quickly for people that, maybe they are a junior artist and now they're able to do the work of a senior level artist. Uh, we're, we're seeing rapidly not just text to image, but also text to 3D assets. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's another aspect that is so time consuming and so costly for an organization to employ when they're developing content for XR, that if we can remove that barrier, again, we're driving those costs down and, and of course getting things faster to market. Uh, so everything from image to video generation, but really even now what we're seeing and some of the work that you guys are doing about just world building. So text to world that's right. building. That's right. You know, being able to just speak words into and, and speak worlds into existence by saying a few words. And we have groups that are just, just on the cutting edge of, right now they're building 3D domains, game domains. Uh, we'll see an image here later that I'll point out. But they're doing that you know, in a microphone, 2D screen, but they're really close to just doing that straight in XR. Right? So I go in XR, I put my headset on, I don't use tools anymore, I don't use my hand controllers, I just start talking. Maybe I'll move some hand motions and move things around. We're, we're right there yeah, to yeah. get that. It's yeah. Super close. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you know, as that moves on, it's, it's about that personalization aspect. That's right. So, you know, we're seeing the content being created for individual organizations, but almost down to that individual user level, where each user can have a unique experience that's very personal to them, and where we see such value in XR yep. training around that is around that dynamic aspect of learning how people are most efficient. Uh, if someone is weak in an area or strong in another area, yep. tailoring the content around that is really an amazing power that, that these right. LLMs are That's allowing right. for. Yep. And, and we'll start being able to do, we've already started this type of stuff, the sentiment analysis. So as you're training and your large language model realizes someone's responding in a very stressed out or a very yep. stress filled thing, you'll be able to do that sentiment analysis relatively soon. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be this incredible influx of, of, of new content that is so unique and so specific to that end user that it, you know, it's, it's almost um, unpredictable the results that you'll get out of it from an end user perspective, like where they're going to be in their path. Yeah. But it will give you predictable outcomes because it will be training that will be pioneering specifically for them. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's, all, yeah. it's all right down their, their wheelhouse. And with that, yeah, I'm always, I'm always surprised. Whenever I work with an LLM, whether it's language or, or images or 3D models, I'm always shocked at what it can do. Yeah. But, but as you said earlier today at breakfast, mm -hmm. This is as bad as it will be. Yeah. Right. This is this is the most expensive running LLMs will be. This is the worst they'll perform. That's right. And uh, so this really is the beginning of these new use cases coming out with people figuring out how to run these LLMs. You know, and if you think of the LLM as basically an encoding of the current human knowledge, yeah, it's a extremely powerful thing. So, so thinking that as a, as a bubble yeah. or a what's new flavor of the month yeah. is, is absolutely you know, not right. Right, yeah. and, and the, the idea is, is that this is going to save organizations time, money, uh, as one thing we know about companies is they like to keep the money in the house, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, don't, they yeah. don't want to send it out the door if they can continuously iterate and improve their processes. And they want customized tools. tools, right? And they, so. they, and they want it to be specific for them, and they want, to, yep. they want to make their employees more efficient. They want to create that better holistic view. And if this allows that at this level already today, 
and we're just at the beginning, yeah, it's, it's, we're, yes. it, it's, it's going to be insane what we're going to be able to create in just a few short periods. Yeah, we're getting back to that kind of how much data can you get in, how fast can you do it, especially with these retur retrieval augmented systems and such. So, you know, back to that ETL problem, but now that we've got the, the transformers being able to just chomp so much data with these parallel systems, it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, I can customize my LLM very quickly now. Yep. And that is a really large LLM that understands human context. And that goes right yeah. to the democratization we talked Absolutely. about. Absolutely. This is no longer the purview of select few. Uh, there's, there's so many assets and tools that every person can go out there and use. And we're seeing this convergence of the tools already. Um, if we look at even just in the past week or so, uh, ChatGPT has enabled Dolly to be accessible directly in Ch inside ChatGPT. You could even now take an image and drop it into ChatGPT and ask it to describe what is in there, and it gives you that feedback. It's fascinating. So you're starting to get this cross crossover. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, now absolutely. it's not just yeah. one tool yeah. over here and one tool over here. They're starting to converge and starting to make everything work together. And we're seeing that even with big name organizations like Microsoft, obviously, and Adobe, who's got their Firefly generator that Nvidia has, yep. you know, is kind yep. of at the heart of. And you know, those tools are allowing people uh, to work with the tools that they already know. Yep. Seasoned Photoshop designers that may have taken something uh, and, and put in hours worth of work can now do it in seconds. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I'm curious, you know, with that thought, I'm curious, like, you know, we did a, a deal with Gettys where they've got so much beautiful content, image content, and so they can train a model up very specific using that content very value. As people see those things happen and say, what content do I have? What, what content does my company have to now put into this knowledge base? I think that'll be a, another piece of the puzzle. hundred uh, uh, percent. And, and you know, we talked about how long we've been working together in your past life as, as a professor, you know, seeing all the, the areas that, you'll, you know, you know, that you see running into academia, the growth in there. Uh, my past background being in content development and creation, you know, I used to manage teams of 20, sometimes hundreds of people that were working on these things and knowing what these tools are, we could have saved millions of dollars in the development process. And yeah, yeah. Just, you know, knowing all those little nuances, there's so much cost savings in there. I'm sure you see that across you know, education as well. Absolutely, and, and you know, back to training. Back to training and seeing how to write, and there's just so many uses. But it's going to take a really novel set of, let's say, another layer of creators to figure out how to use these tools to train the next generation. That's right. But in the, you know, in the academic space, I did visualization and simulation. And simulation was you know, very, very strict analytic models, property, material properties and such. And, and then came in this kind of probability engine, right? The AIs. So I know the input, I know the output. And if I can give a bunch of examples of that, I can predict a new output with a new input. And, and so these new models are making it to where it's less important that we, we have to you know, understand and measure everything inside and we can actually start predicting systems far, far right. faster. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's really, it's and really they, fascinating. They just exponentially grow on top of one another, and we're yep. just seeing that that, yep. uh, that aspect. And you know, really our final area is around that, that exponential growth, that acceleration that we're seeing. All of these things coming together, bringing things faster to market, it not only accelerates individual in, in their processes themselves, you know, we have these programmers we, we talk to on a regular basis in the XR space, and they are saying that they are 10 times more productive than they were this time last year because of these tools. You know, that means that they're pumping out 10 times much more or they're saving time for other assets and other things that they're doing. And if you extrapolate that out to the amount of content they could develop, you see this massive uptick of, of content that we're going to see in the space. Yeah, I'm certainly, I'm, my team, I'm, I know, doesn't want me to put out 10 more X content. <laughs> but, but I think in general, that's really good. Yeah. But, you know, looking at those, those letters, uh, faster, cheaper, what's coming next. So, like you say, at the bottom of this, this is year one. Yeah. And, and we can see improvements, and we'll talk on this really quickly about scaling and all, but that transformer inflection point, right, was, was a super inflection point. Now we're starting to see the acceleration of that point with these scaling things. But this is year one. You know, there might be a new encoding method that's not transformer-based, attention-based. It might be the next generation thing, which breaks the lid open even more, right? So it's really fascinating to see where this is going. Yeah, that's the important thing to remember. This We haven't hit ChatGPT's one-year public anniversary yet. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> and yeah. it's already yeah, yeah. impacted so many areas. Yeah. I so, can't keep up with the articles. It, right? it, yeah. it, it's every day there's something brand new. But I, I, you know, one of the things we've talked about, you know, NVIDIA is such a great partner to Lenovo, and we've been all working together for so many years. But 
Yeah, the, the numbers really are astounding. You guys are behind so much of this from just a workhorse perspective. You know. Yep, yep. I, I grabbed a 70 to 95 percent from analysts, right? This isn't an internal number. I don't, I don't know that I could find that. But if you just run through routers and such, or rotors and, and look, and, and that's AI in general. And you can imagine Gen AI, we're probably at the, the high end of the market share in the Gen AI. But the way I think of that is that's largely training, right? This new inflection point of highly parallel, even more highly parallel than the recurrent and, and concurrent neural nets. These transformers are so parallel that training big amounts of data is the, the dish du jour today. Mm -hmm. But what's exciting about that is where that's going with both you know, inference and then XR. So inference is what NVIDIA is doing a lot of work at scaling inference, whether it's with our, with our kind of back-end load balancing or the quantization type of work we're doing. That scaling to get that inference down to a total cost of ownership or a total cost of usership mm -hmm. is really the key to making this a democratized field. And that's the, one of the biggest challenges we see right now is that you know a lot of organizations are employing it. It's getting used so much it's actually costing them more than they expected because yep. of the high utility of these tools. Uh, every time you you know put something into ChatGPT, it's running off of somebody's power and somebody's GPU yep. somewhere, yep. Uh, which is costing somebody money. And you know the monthly fee that they charge for that is just not balancing things out just yet. Just yet, yeah. but it's, it really is about, you know, and that's, that's why thinking of these platforms, right? There's the big supercomputer in the cloud with the H100s for training, but can I have a smaller workstation build where I can do some of my prompt engineering? Can I do things on a smaller scale where my, my teams can just experiment 24 seven without incurring, you know, huge uh, data migration, CSP costs and such. So this is going to be a multi-scale thing, and that's why being with Lenovo is such a great piece of the Gen AI story is you guys ship you know, soup to nuts all the way through servers to workstations. And it, it, yeah, it's really yeah, we, exciting. We talk about that, you know, cloud to pocket, or in this case, you know, cloud to on your face, you know, with, with XR. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, we have so many of the aspects that we touch, and we're seeing it, all this being crunched right now in the cloud, we're moving to the edge, it's eventually going to be on device, you know, in very, very near future. Um, that iterative loop that happens is just going to get yeah. tighter and tighter, where we're just going to see everything uh, you know, be uh, near real time or instantaneous where, like you are saying before, we'll yeah, be yeah. able to jump in and uh, experience something brand new just by speaking it into existence. Brand new, and, and that's that whole, you know, since we've been working on yeah. streaming XR together yeah. for a few years, yeah. this idea of that headset or your phone, whatever way you want to think of it, as an IoT device, not just a visual device, but IoT, is I'm going to walk around an environment with a relatively lightweight headset it's going to stream data back to these Gen AI models and other AI models, and it's going to deliver context for me in my environment. It's going to say, you know, what I'm close to, what I'm nearby, what I should think about, you know, to heighten my experience. It'll help with the immersion. So that that 100%. loop with the streaming is is huge. Again, right? further personalization of it based on right. context, based on the information, things that you wouldn't be able to do previously because of these tools. Yeah, we can now basically just work right into the workflow and predict that uh, if someone does X, they may do you know, uh, A, B, C, y, X, Y, Z, yeah, yeah. but not having to have that prediction in there makes it so much more unique and, and, and significant That's to right. that end That's user. Right. Uh, creating that, that, that really specific, this happened to me, this was for me, uh, it, 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 you know, it's not a, uh, a, oh, I did it this way and everyone this, else sees this it. This reminder came in yeah. to me, you know, or, yeah. or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. So really exciting confluence of many technologies right now. Absolutely. Yeah, XR Gen AI is, is really exciting. So where you know, we care about it inside Lenovo is, is that you know, the thing that we always talk about is that within this space, uh, I could hand somebody a laptop right now and everyone knows what to do with a laptop. You hand somebody a VR headset or XR headset, uh, a lot of people aren't going to know what they could do with it from a creation standpoint, from, from that utility standpoint. Uh, so we have to deliver the whole end-to-end -end solution mm -hmm. for, for our customers, for our partners. And how we do that is talking to them about that whole soup to nuts yeah, approach. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can't yeah. just say, here's a device. We have to seriously consider how are we going to make this an effective tool for them? And that comes very much into the content development platform. And you know, everything we are working on is working with these partners in the space, from yep. small ISVs to, to big industry partners like you guys. If we don't bring everybody to that table, we're not providing something that is, is fully unique and, and a full solution. Right, right. Yeah. You know, that image that showed earlier was an Unreal game engine where for the developer just spoke into a microphone 
this environment, right? Build me a castle, build was, me this. What was the name? Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Masterpiece, yeah. Masterpiece yeah. and it's their, their generate piece of software that's either just about to come out or is just, just launched. But we need, we need a bunch of those, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? We need that over and over again, where there's just creators all over the place. And, and that's yeah, that yeah. last point there, is, is breaking down barriers, right? The, yep, the entire yep. thing we're talking about, the whole theme of this event is AI for all. You know, when we talk about AI for all, it, it sounds like just this grandiose term, but yeah, yeah. this really is an area where I know people that are on all ends of the spectrum, from plumbers to lawyers to designers, that all use ChatGPT on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, I, I, it, you know we're, we've got, everybody utilizing these tools. Now, previously, the purview was for organizations to use it for crunching specific things, yep. but now it's, well, I've got these things in my, my cupboard. What should I make for dinner tonight? Right, right. Or uh, I need to help my, my, uh, my kid with my, the book report. What can I do there? Or I need to provide custom imagery for this you know, presentation I'm doing. All these things are being used by everyone across the board, and it's not just in these individual wheelhouses. So, the more we see that growth, the more we see this convergence of tools into singular tools that can yeah. do all these, you know, Swiss Army yeah. knife sort of things, uh, the more we'll see continual growth in but, utility of them. You know, I remember in undergrad, I wrote my senior thesis with a typewriter, so that gives you an idea of age. Yeah. <laughs> my PhD was written with WordPerfect, right? I and that. and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, the little dot matrix printer. Yeah. And was it green? The green dots? It, 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 was, a, it was a monochrome monitor. Monochrome, right? okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I th I think the material I put out is better now than it was back then. Yeah. So and th those are yeah. you know those were big changes back then, but relative to where we're at now with Gen AI, that's a really minor set of feats of oh, yeah. turning a typewriter into a word processing system, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, and so, and you know everyone's asking about like well especially within the XR space. How do we you know, make this into something that will, people will gradually use more and more? And, and we know the technology treadmill will make devices lighter, smaller, faster, better. Yep. So we know that's coming. Yep. We know anything about our cell phones, the, the bricks of yep. like the, the 80s up to where we are right now with the tiny little phones in our pockets uh, that have all the processing power that, you know, that we could possibly yeah. imagine yep. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago. We're going to see that in the XR space. And the content development process is going to really help that because as creation continues to grow, as people can get into the field and create more content, it's going to drive more demand for these That's products right. out there. It's going to be the best way to experience that spatial content that everyone's very excited about. And as it becomes easier to develop, people will want to consume it with lightweight XR devices. And that influx of content is going to drive the industry to continue to grow that and continue yeah. to push down those metrics right. that are going to make it something that is as easy to put on as, as, your, as your current class. You know, the yeah. internet and internet shopping brought us this kind of the long tail market, right? Yep. So, so this new content creation paradigm where you can have everything personalized to you, personalized to your company, what have you, this long tail is just gonna get longer and, and run, long, you know, run that much further out. That's right. Because we're gonna see individuals show up and that's, I think that's one of the most exciting parts is as an individual, I get to start selecting how stories end, how stories go, what I wanna see and it's, it's gonna be, really fascinating. And we know one thing from the internet is that once you get people involved in that crowdsource factor, when people can start creating and start yeah. donating to that conversation, and now within, you know, being able to create in your home with no knowledge, being able to create games, being able to create XR experiences, we're going to see this massive, you know, indie development group yeah, yeah. that's going to come out of the ground and it's going to blow up that content field. So we'll have so much more to consume, so much more specific things, and, and obviously a lot more unique and exciting content. Yep. 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 I appreciate you coming oh, out. Oh, thanks for having yeah. me. It was, yeah. it was great ta chatting it was with you pleasure. about this this morning and, and yeah. here on stage. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, folks. Take care.